Howdy folks, little John here again. Uh, another episode of Brew School. And today we're stepping away from the beer, still staying with the brewing theme. Uh, we're going to knock up a very simple, uh, easy apple cider. Now, we've all got wives and or girlfriends, other halves, husbands if you're a woman, you know. But a lot of people seem to have you know, the partner or friends that like to drink cider as opposed to beer. Uh, I know, I mean, I've got kids that prefer to drink cider than beer. So, you see quite a lot on the forums, people are asking how to make a cider and what do I do, what don't I do, you know, is it difficult? Um, it's not a hard thing to do. The biggest problem you have with cider that most people tend to find is that it tends to dry out very easily with yeah, with pretty much any yeast you use, uh, which can make it difficult to drink. But there are ways around that, and that's sort of some of the things we're going to sort of quickly address today as we go through. Okay, so that, today I'm just doing a really small batch. I'm doing, just using a five litre demi. Uh, these are nice and easy. So I'm going to get about a, yeah, around a four litre turnout for this. I'll get about a, maybe a dozen bottles out of it. And again, this is more experimenting with just this mix more than anything else. Uh, see how it goes uh, before I go ahead and maybe do I say a full batch. But this will give you an idea of what we're doing. So what I'm using on this today, uh, apple, pear and raspberry juice. Now, this is about 60% apple juice. Now it's actually mostly pear juice, apple and raspberry. Uh, what you find is that the pear juice is not fully fermentable. So it's recommended to use a little bit of the pear juice to help keep some sweetness. And that's what I'm looking for in this. Now the last batch of cider I made I used 75% is pure apple juice and 25% of, these, of this bottle. Uh, and I used USO5 yeast and I finished off with a final gravity of um, 1.002. It had just a tiny little bit of sweetness there, it was a bit dry. Um, it wasn't really one way or the other. Uh, I would have preferred a little bit sweeter and that's what I'm trying to get today. So I'll be using the straight pear apple raspberry juice because I think this gives it a nice, sort of, nice bit of a flavour. So it's a little bit different from your standard apple. But if you want to use just plain apple juice that'll work. And what I'll also be using is just a tin here of straight pear juice. Um, now, I'm not going to quite fit all these things. I'm going to want to leave a little bit of space. So there's 4.85 litres there, roughly. Um, I probably only really want about four and a half to leave some headspace for the uh, krausen on the yeast. But I'm hoping that this is going to leave me nice and sweet. And what I'm using yeast-wise is SO4. It's packed from the uh, local home brew shop. So what I've done is I've actually weighed out four grams of that, so basically a gram a litre. And that's what I'll be pitching directly onto this. So nothing, nothing difficult, nothing fancy. And all, all you've got to do is get your apple juice into your, uh, into your fermenter, whether it's a demi or a normal fermenter. Now of course we're going to need some oxygen. And simple way to do that. Get some of your apple juice out of your bottle and just shake the shit out of it. Now, it's easier to shake this than to get this bug when he's full and try and shake him. So give that a shake. I'm not going to worry about putting mountains of oxygen in here. I've done ciders before and I haven't oxygenated it at all and they've been fine. So given this juice you know, shouldn't have been boiled, but either way. This is how I get a little bit of oxygen in there, so just pouring that in. And we'll do that with the second bottle. Again, we'll just get rid of that bit off the top. Yeah, I like this. I like to use this raspberry juice, I mean, it's becoming quite popular with ciders. You know, you've seen it with just raspberry and strawberry and you know, different flavours. 
that just adds a little bit of extra character. Um, and this is the beauty of doing cider yourself and with the amount of juices that are available yeah, you can make any combination that you really want to you buy most juices in varying forms so you can make up any combination of stuff you want I mean you see people playing around with all sorts of berries and yeah, different fruit, mango, I saw one last night, mango and uh, I can't think what it was, mango and something. So now I'll just top this up with the pear juice from my tin. And obviously, I'm not going to be able to oxygenate particularly well, but given the old way these cans work, this should pretty much oxygenate a little bit as it goes. But no, it's not going to. It'll be fine. And I'll just get that in there. And that's a bit cloudier, so that's going to. Um, Add some little character maybe to the uh, to the final look. I think that's about all I'm going to want to really get in there. I don't want any more than that. And like I said, needs some space there. Okay, and that's it. That's pretty well ready to go. I'm not going to worry about oxygenating that anymore. It's got enough in there now. Yeah. Um, but that's it. it. Was difficult, wasn't it? Yeah, you sit at home going, oh, I don't want to make a cider. Yeah, I'm not mucking around. Yeah, it was really really difficult. This is. So it's way easier to make them be any day of the week. Now the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to whack a little bit of nutrient in there. Um, just got some wine nutrient. There's very nutrients you can get. This is the one I can get from my local shop. Um, and it says to use yeah, between a gram and two grams uh, per litre. So again, around that four litre mark. So I'm just going to pour basically the best part of the teaspoon in there. That'll do the job. And get the yeast in there. And same thing. Straight in. I'm not going to worry about rehydrating or mucking around or anything like that. Okay. Fees in. Just give that a little swirl around to mix that. All through, that's all it needs, it really needs. Got me bung there. I'll pop just a little bit of boiled water. Obviously, it's cool so it doesn't uh, melt you. Alright. Get him in. That's it. Simple. Now I'm just going to sit that in the spare room of the house because it's at the moment sitting in the high high teens. I'm going to sneak it into the low twenties during the day. Uh, you know, if I was doing it in a big, you know, full full batch in the fermenter, I'd have it in the fridge under temp control. But as I said, this is more about experimenting with flavours. Yeah. So I'd recommend, yeah, if you're doing it at home and you're making, you are making a good batch, get in the temp control fridge. Uh, if you've got one, or find like, like I said, nice stable place. Obviously, yes, so far it's going to prefer to be in that sort of 18 to 20 degree mark. It's going to work comfortably there. Don't want to go on too much about that. You don't want to throw any of the any beery esters into it. But bang, simple. So that's it. Apple cider, or it's not actually called apple cider with the with the different fruit in there, but close enough. Yeah. So if you wanna yeah, if you've been thinking about doing it, you wanna do it, it's that easy. Yeah. Full batch, ten bottles. Ten bottles of that. If you can get them when they're two dollars a bottle, which is when I grab those when they're on special. Yeah, you're looking at twenty bucks. Yeah, a couple of dollars worth maybe eight dollars worth of juice if you use two packets. And that's it. So under thirty bucks you can bung out yeah two cartons of apple cider. And try and get that at your local uh, local bottle shop. So, that's it. Brew school for today. Apple cider. Get into it.